think that you don't need this message, but everybody does. Because you are either single, and one of these days you're going to get married, or you're married, or divorced, and or remarried. So we all need to hear about this. So let's bow our head and let's pray. Father, we want to thank you as we go to your word today. Amen. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, that <clears throat> you will think through my mind this morning and that you will speak through my lips. Thank you for these, your wonderful people that got here to hear, mind to understand and heart to receive the word of the living God. Everybody say amen. Let's open our Biblions, please, to the book of Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews and chapter 5, we are going to read verse 12. Hebrews and chapter 5, and then we're going to read verse 12. So our series, this is our second message today. My wife, uh, Rosanna, we've been married now for how many years, Rosanna? 33 years. Got married when I was 20 years old, so this is now my 33rd year of marriage. Do I know everything about marriage? Nope. Have I learned something about marriage? Yep. All right. Do, am I an expert in marriage? Nope. Are you listening? But are we learning things every day? Yes, we are. But let's open our Bible, please, to Hebrews in chapter 5, and we're going to read verse 12 and 13, and very important that you follow along with me today, and I'm going to make it as simple as simple can be, and uh, so I hope you can understand what I'm saying. If I'm, if I'm mumbling my words, forgive me, I'm jet lagged, but uh, it'll be all right. Just came back from Europe, had a fantastic time in Europe. Uh, a lot of people got saved in uh, Switzerland, in Geneva, fantastic, and then went to Paris, France, glory to God, the food was exquisite and amazing, thank you Lord Jesus, amen, I was thinking about y'all when I was eating the chocolates, but praise God, but it was melting, <laughs> the chocolates melted, thank you Lord, couldn't bring any because it was 96 degrees, then I was in London, had a great time in London and Southampton, I think this week, uh, in the last 10 days, we have seen over 250 people receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, and about 50 people got born again. Can you say amen to that? So, let's go to Hebrews in chapter 5, and we're going to read from verse 12 to verse 13. Paul says, for when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Verse 13, please. And that's the part that I want us to look at. In fact, let's all, let's all open our mouth and read that verse together, please. Verse 13. For everyone that uses what? Milk is what? Unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. Read that again, please. Louder, please. Come on now, Jacksonville. Talk to me, everybody now. For everyone that what? Uses Milk is what? Unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. Now, I want you to take note of the word unskillful in the word of righteousness. Now, when you read your Bible, first thing I want you to understand about the Bible, the Bible is not just a book about salvation and redemption. It is the only book that provides you salvation and redemption. But the Bible is more than that. The Bible is the best business book you'll ever read in your life. The Bible is the best marriage book you'll ever read in your life. And the Bible is the best relationship book that you'll ever read in your life. If you read the book of Proverbs, if you read the book of um, Songs of Solomon, you'll understand a thing or two about marriage. Are you listening to me now? Now, uh, we have people who are have illusions, and they are, because they have illusion, they have delusion. Are you listening? Because they have what? Illusion, they have delusion. And they, uh, and they, 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 they think that there is something called marriage made in heaven. There is no such thing as marriage made in heaven. The only marriage that is made in heaven is the marriage supper of the Lamb. That is when Jesus is the groom and we are the bride. Can you say amen? And guess what? You're not going to have any problem with Jesus. Now, he might have a problem with you, but, <laughs> but he doesn't, you're not going to have any problem with Jesus. But marriage is an institution and a constitution of God. Now, 
Our problem is that when we get married, we are unskillful in marriage. I mean, bear witness. All right? We are unskillful when we get married. As a matter of fact, most of us, I mean, unless you've studied on it, even when you get into a relationship prior to marriage, you are unskillful in relationship. And that's why, because we are unskillful in a relationship, things don't work out. When you are skillful, that's when you can produce results. The reason why you're not seeing the results that you're looking for in your marriage is because you and I are unskillful in our marriage. The day that the preacher or the pastor pronounced you husband and wife, that doesn't mean you became right there and then a professional husband and wife. It means that you were just a husband and wife legally, declared legally on paper, right? And you assume the title of husband and wife, but that does not make you uh, a husband in conduct or a wife in conduct. Can I get a witness? So there are things that you have to learn. Are you listening? And there's no better place to learn than from the scriptures. Well, first of all, I want you to understand this. I want you to write this down. First of all, um, you know, I, I've been a husband now. Do you have that picture for me, Paul? All right, you don't have it? Thank you, Lord. All right, I'm going, let me show it to you on my phone. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Can you put it on the, on the screen, Paul? All right, I'm, Paul's going to try and put it on the screen, okay? And uh, this is how I feel about it, you know? This is how I feel about uh, marriage. And, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, my wife hit the jackpot when she married me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, praise God. At some point, okay, can you get it? Or this is my one minute. Thank you. All right, it's coming on. All right, thank you, Lord Jesus. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. All right, thank you, Jesus. Can you see that? Some of you might see it on my phone. I'll show it to you on my phone, and then he's going to show it to you on the screen. Glory to God. Can you read this, Pastor? Uh, Pastor? What does that say? Being a trophy husband is exhausting. <laughs> okay. Being a trophy husband is what? Just exhausting. How many trophy husbands do we have here? Come on, come let me see your hands. <laughs> How many disagreeing wives do we have here today? <laughs> All right. Is that right, Ethan? You are a trophy husband? Come on now. When she, I mean, uh, that's my daughter-in-law and my son over there. Praise God. Come on, give them a hand together. Praise God. Hallelujah. I told him, I said, uh, if she ever gives you any grief, just tell her, you married the Arachion Stallion. <laughs> I don't know, if, you, I don't know if, you, if he's used that, but that's the kind of uh, um, advice that you get from your father, amen? You married the Arachion, the Arachion Stallion. All right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can you say amen? I don't know if you, how many of you have ever seen the, the comedy show series, uh, um, Everybody Loves Raymond? Oh, how many loves Raymond? The best, the, the best character in there is Frank. Frank is the best character. And one day he was talking, uh, his wife, they were uh, having an argument in, uh, in, in, the, in the store of all place. Uh, and his wife, what's her name? M Marie. Marie said, I'm not just some kind of trophy wife, you know. And he looked at her and said, you? Trophy wife? What contest in hell did I win? <laughs> For you to be labeled a trophy wife. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding with you. Praise God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. All right. Now, but the problem, ladies and gentlemen, is that many of us are unskillful in marriage. How many of you remember, I think it was in the early 90s, there was a book that came out, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. Yeah, I think a bit further away than that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But many of us are unskillful in marriage. A person who is unskillful will not know how to produce results. A person who is unskillful will not know how to produce results. And so, ladies and gentlemen, many are having poor results in their marriages because they are not, they're simply not skillful in relationship and they're not simply skillful when it comes to marriage. 
You don't, you don't get married and overnight you become a super husband and a super wife. No, it doesn't work like that. Uh, first of all, you need to understand this. Marriage is a clash. Marriage is what? A clash. It is a clash of two cultures coming together. I think uh, Miss Rosie told you last week about the ice cream incident. How many of you remember that? Right? Uh, she made for me spaghetti bolognese. And when I first got married, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we ate, Italian food. It was pasta this, different types of pasta, pizza, spaghetti, tortellini, and uh, cannellonis, all the ninis, all the ninis. I did not grow up on the ninis. I grew up on rice, chicken, and meat. So I told her one day, give me some meat, right? And that was an experience, praise God. But let me just give, let me give, let me give you, let me give you, you, you know, I used to come in the house uh, and I would open the kitchen door and there'll be smoke in the house. Is this the Shekinah? No, it's not Shekinah. It's Rosanna who has been cooking. Are you listening? And it was a burnt offering. <laughs> I had a burnt offering almost every day, but that's fine. Praise God. But she made me spaghetti bolognese, and before tasting it, I put chili sauce all over it. And she got mad with me and said, is that how you, you're going to eat this? I said, yeah. She said, Italian people do not eat spaghetti like this. I said, look at me. Do I look Italian to you? <laughs> no. She said, you tell me, you mean to tell me that you are going to put chili sauce on everything? Yeah, everything. I put chili sauce on my pineapple, don't I? Aha, uh -huh, that's right. That's right. Brown people know what I'm talking about, amen. <laughs> I put chili sauce on cucumber. You, salt and pepper and chili sauce. Best thing ever. Thank you, Lord. Our mango. Green mango, not ripe mango, green mango. You put all kind of things, chili on it. And she got mad with me. She said, you're going to put chili on everything? I said, I sure will. And guess what? She goes, do you want some dessert? I said, yes, I do. And she brought me vanilla ice cream and then poured chili sauce all over it. I didn't care. I ate it. It was hot. It was cold. It was hot. It was cold. But I enjoyed it, thank you, just to spite her. <laughs> just to spite her. You see, when, when we first got married, we had clash. We clashed over toilet paper. Huh? Because our bathroom was purple. And she wanted to get purple toilet paper. And flowery, smelly, nice smell toilet paper. That's what they have in England. I said, who cares? Get the cheap one. No, we're going to have the purple one. What difference does that make? It's all going to change into one color after that anyway. I don't need to be any more graphic, do I? We got into a big argument over that. Our other argument was over toothpaste. Anybody, anybody here ever argued over toothpaste? Huh? I argued because in her house, she said to me, she came outside and she was rolling the toothpaste. In my house, we didn't do that. We kept this tube straight. So I looked at her and I said, what's this? And these were her words. In my house, that is how we do it. Then I had this brilliant, unskillful response. This is not your house. This is my house. And in my house, we keep it straight. <laughs> Barry, you're wanted in the back there. Thank you, Jesus. So, ladies and gentlemen, we argued over that. So, the way we resolved it, and that's not how you resolve it, right? We bought two different tubes of toothpaste. I said, you can roll it, roll your one for all I care, and then my one. Keep it straight. Now, guess what? 
couldn't care less whether it's there, if it's rolled up or straight. In fact, sometimes I just squeeze it in the middle. Drive her nuts. Thank you, Jesus. All right. You're not going to become skillful overnight. Look at the next verse again, please. Verse 14. Verse 14, please. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age or mature. Even those who by reason of use or reason of practice have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. What makes a good marriage is practicing and exercising over years. And guess what? I've been married now for 30 years and there's still things I'm learning about Rosanna and there's still things that she's learning about me. Now, just because you call, you, you call yourself a spirit-filled believer or you have the anointing of God does not mean that you are skillful in marriage. We all have got to learn. Can you say amen? <clears throat> now, so marriage is a clash of cultures. Marriage is a clash of upbringing. Marriage is a clash of education. But then you're going to have to come to the middle and merge and create your own family. All right, now let's go to the book of Genesis. And out of the book of Genesis today, I'm going to give you four simple principles. The book of Genesis is the book of beginning. And God laid out for us in the book of Genesis the principles of marriage. And if you understand these four simple principles, it will change your life. So we're going to call it Genesis principle number one, Genesis principle number two, okay? All right, or Genesis law of marriage number one, or Genesis law number two. All right, let's go to Genesis. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Chapter two. I want to tell you this. I did not know when I first got married how to be a husband. I didn't know. I just had a title, but I didn't know. And so I had to learn over the years. I did not know how to be a dad when my kid came along, and then I just had to learn how to be a dad. Praise God. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 2. Let's read verse 24 and verse 25, and then I'm going to read from the NIV. Genesis Chapter 2, verse 24 till verse 25. Okay? For this cause, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. I need you please to underline that in your Bible. A man shall leave his what? Father and mother. Everybody say father and mother. Father and, mother. and what? So the man shall leave his father and his mother. And then what? And shall cleave unto his wife. So write the word, circle the word leave, and then circle the word cleave. Circle the word leave, and then circle the word cleave unto his wife, not girlfriend. Amen. Shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Verse 25, please. Verse 25, thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 25, look in your Bible. It says, and the man and the wife, what? They were both naked, but they were not ashamed. They were both naked, but they were not ashamed. So, what you've just read here, ladies and gentlemen, is called the foundation of marriage. The foundations of marriage. Okay? So, I want you, I want you to write this down, please. So, I'm going to give you four little principles of marriage. Genesis principles of marriage. Number one, I want you please to write this down. Number one, let's, I'm going to read that to you from the NIV. It says, For this cause a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife. Number one, I want you please to write this down. The first Genesis law of marriage that God states, and first of all, before I give you this, uh, this law, let's go back to verse 24, please. Verse 24 uh, <clears throat> let's read that verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his what? Father and his mother. Everybody say father and mother. Father and mother. So 
God's nuclear family is made up of what? Father, mother, and children. Not what the world has legalized today, father, father, oh mother, mother. What God has legalized, amen, what God constituted from the beginning, amen, it is what father and mother. A child needs a father and a mother. So the nuclear family is made up of father, mother, and children. All right. So therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife. Number one, I want you please to write this down. That's called the law of priority and responsibility. The law of priority. Why is that important? Now notice what it says here. A man who grew up in the, in, in the environment of a family with his father and mother. So while before he got married, the mother and the father was his priority. But the day that you get married, your priority has changed. Are you listening? And some people do not understand that. I did not understand that at the beginning. Let me tell you this. Because when I first got married, I want to explain this to you, and I'm going to, I'm going to tell on myself today. Uh, when I would come home from work, right, my wife would say to me, Rosanna would say to me, I told you about all the ninis and all the spaghettis and all that stuff, right? I didn't want any of them. And so I was like, oh, God, I need some food. Thank you, Jesus. So when I would come home, she said, uh, do you want to eat? Ah, nah, nothing. What do you want to eat? Ah, oh, just give me a piece of toast. That's all you want? Yeah, just a piece of toast. And a cup of tea. So that, this was going on for a couple of weeks or more. She said, boy, that boy doesn't eat nothing. He just eats toast and uh, drinks tea at nighttime, not knowing that after work, I would go to my mom's. Go to my mom and eat food at my mom's. And my mom said, don't, are you gonna, uh, you're not going to eat at home? I know, no, 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 no. I don't want no spaghetti. I don't want no pasta. I don't want no pizza. I don't want no cannelloni. I don't want no tortellini. I don't want no nini. I just want some regular, uh, give me some chicken, some rice, and blah, blah, blah. You're going to get in trouble, Glenn. That's fine. Just, she won't know. If you don't tell her, I won't tell her. Right? Until one day, she found out I was going to eat in my mother's house. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to write this down. So, the first law of marriage that God teaches us is the law of priority and the law of responsibility. You need to make your marriage your priority. So, I, need, I, I, I then had to understand that as much as I love my mom's cooking, you, know, you got to understand this, ladies and gentlemen. My dad was a French gourmet chef, right? And my mom is an awesome, super-duper cook. So I grew up on good food. My dad would teach me all about French food and teach me all about this stuff, right? And then I got married, and my wife is not a gourmet chef, all right? Nothing against that. But I was still attached to my mom and to my dad. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to write this down. This is the newlyweds, the newlyweds' responsibility and the parents' responsibility. So, the moment that you get married, Scripture says your priority is your wife and your priority is your husband. So, for this cause shall a man leave his mother and his father. Now, the, the, the responsibility of the mother and the father is to leave these kids alone. Let them find their own feet. If they want your counsel, they will ask you for it. If they don't, if they don't ask you for your counsel, don't give it to them. So as much as the man leaves his mother and his father. The girl leaves his, her mother and her father. And many times, as parents, it's difficult because you still want to say something to your son. You still want to say something to your daughter. Now, my mom didn't have any problem. And my dad, my dad, he was just, 
in his own little world. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, but we had to find our feet by ourselves. Because, now if she knows my mother. My mother was a clean freak. Once you get up in the morning, you don't go back to bed until it's bedtime. Right? And once, <laughs> ask her, come over here for a minute, please. Come over here for a minute. <laughs> ask her, I need, I, need, I need some battery change, please. All right. Ask her, uh, what did my dad do to you to teach you? My dad was in the Navy. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. All right. Uh, what, did she, what did he show you how to make the bed? Yeah, no, no, they're going to be in the battery in a minute. Thank you, yeah, Jesus. Told me how to make a bed. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right, so tell them how he taught you how to make the bed. Very slowly and... <laughs> Very, Very meticulously. Yes. Tucking in, spreading the sheet perfectly, not a single wrinkle in sight, completely even, all tucked in neatly, folded, the corners folded and tucked in neatly, and then the layers, and then the, everything had to be perfect. And I thought, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I just watched and nodded my head, and thank you. And she, she, he had a coin, right? He had a coin, and he says, when your bed is done, you throw that coin on that bed, and that coin will bounce up. And she looked at me and said, that is not happening. <laughs> that is not going to happen. All right? So my father, both my father and my mother, they were clean freak. Okay? So... Now, if I go and try to impose that law, or they come to the house, why is this like this? Why is this like that? Why is this like this? Dad, mom, that's fine in your house. But now, I'm no longer living in that house. I'm living in this house, although I would still have a fit myself when I first got married. Why is this? Now, let's claim this place. Even, even the kids know today, where's Jody? She's at the back right there. She, she knows her ministry. Before you go to bed, make sure you vacuum the house. Make sure you vacuum, 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 vacuum. But you've got to make your husband and or your wife to become your priority. You've left your mother and you've left your father. So father, mother, now you leave them alone. alone. It's the law of priority and it's the law of responsibility. So I had to take responsibility for her and she had to take responsibility for me. Can you say amen? So I said to her, if you don't want me to go and eat out there, I won't. But you know what? You're going to have to learn to cook some stuff that I like. Because I don't like every day, even up to now, even now, I still don't eat spaghetti. And I don't go to Italian restaurants in America to go eat Italian food. Because once I've tasted my wife Italian food, couldn't care less about American Italian food. Because it's not the same. Because she grew up in a bona fide Italian home, right? And she makes Italian food the way it's made. Because when I went to Italy and I ate the food over there, I said, that just tastes like my wife's food. That's proper Italian food. So why would I want to do that in America? So people said, do you want to go to the Italian restaurant? No. No, my wife makes the best one. So she makes me her priority and I make her my priority. So write this down, please. So you've got to leave. Now write the word leave. The word leave is a Hebrew word, azab, A-Z-A-B, which literally means to loosen and to relinquish. To loosen and to relinquish. So when God said that a man should leave his father and mother, amen, when he gets married, God meant that as a man, you're now to relinquish the position that you had as a son to which you were previously 
devoted to your mother and to your father, or as a daughter, you are devoted to your mother and to your father, but now you have to be devoted to your husband or to your spouse. Can you say amen to that? Praise God. Doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that you disrespect your parents. Doesn't mean that. The respect must always be there, but there must be a separation. There must be a separation and let these kids find their feet by themselves. So it's the law of priority. So if you're sitting next to your spouse, all right, or if you don't have a spouse, or you're looking for a spouse in the future, and you must say this, I must make my spouse my priority. Can you look at your spouse and tell them that, please? I must make my spouse my priority. <laughs> Amen. Hello, spouse. You must make me your priority. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right. Thank you, Lord. So that means after marriage, my parents are no longer my first priority. My wife or my spouse is my first priority. And the same applies to the wife. Number two, I want you please to write this down, please. <clears throat> now, 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 write it before we go to number two. The law of priority states that what is first must always be first, and second must always remain second. Don't confuse the two. Don't confuse the two. Number two, the second law of marriage, the second Genesis principle of marriage. The first law is the law of priority. The second law, and this is where many of us fail, after marriage, we did it fine before marriage, but we fail after marriage. It's called the law of pursuit. The law of pursuit. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall Cleave, everybody say cleave, cleave to his wife. The word, so write this down please, it's leave to cleave, and in Hebrew literally means to pursue in order to possess, to pursue in order to possess. The word cleave is the Hebrew word dabak, D-A-B-A-K, all right, it means to pursue with great energy and to cling to something zealously. To what? To pursue with great energy and to cling something zealously. How many of you remember before you got married, you were pursuing one another? All right, you were always on the phone, right? You live in your own little world. There's nobody else but you. And I write Libby and Drew. <laughs> before they got married, there was nobody outside of their own little world. It's just Libby. And Andrew. Nobody else mattered. Right? It was now you, you see that because we've just seen them got married, but you were just the same. You were just the same. Right? You remember the years ago before we had cell phone, we had regular phone. And she would call me and I would call and talk to her. All right, Rosie, put the phone down. No, you put the phone down. No, you put the phone down. No, you put the phone down. Oh my God. <laughs> about them. Now you look back, it's all embarrassing, isn't it? They, oh, God. You put the phone down. All right, that's bye. <laughs> so it's the law of pursuit, ladies and gentlemen. It is to pursue with great energy and to cling to something zealously. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the secret of staying in love. You've got to keep pursuing one another. How many of you heard people say, well, I don't think I'm in, I'm, I'm, longer in love with that person. The reason why you stop being in love with that person is because you stop pursuing. You were pursuing once you made that person your priority, you left everybody else and you begin to pursue. You begin to pursue and then what, now that you're married, you're no longer pursuing. Why? Because life gets busy. Work gets in the way. Children gets in the way, and you stop pursuing one another, and you pursue the children. So what happens is that you've got two people living in a house, giving all their attention to the kids, and then when the kids go away, it's like two strangers in the house. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you got to keep pursuing. You got to keep pursuing. Your courting does not end when you get married. I want you to write this down. The law of pursuit means that your courting does not end when you get married. You must make time to go out. You know what? Sometimes one of the best times that Rosie and I have is when we're just going outside. <laughs> I, I think it was sometime prior to church before we used to go um, before church or after church because didn't have time because I was busy, 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 or she was busy. Just go and just drive by Walmart and get some little bit of chicken wings and sit in the parking lot. <laughs> sit in the parking lot, just me and her. She said, That's our time. I was right. <laughs> Five bucks chicken. Can't be that. <laughs> <laughs> can't beat that. No, but you got to make some time to pursue. So look at your spouse and tell them, let's maintain the law of pursuit. What? That's right. Pursue me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's the secret of pursuit. Write this down, please. The law of pursuit. Now, are you hearing this, Anthony? You got to pursue Michelle. Avi, amen, you got to pursue Pallavi. Reggie, you got to pursue Libby, you got to pursue Drew. Paul, you got to pursue Sandy, not pursue the computer. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pastor Steve, you got to pursue Miss Ida. Ethan, you got to pursue. All right. What's the law of pursuit? Write this down. The law of pursuit states that whatever you pursue shows what you have prioritized. Why don't you pursue your husband? Well, I don't have to know you, he's not your priority. Why don't you pursue your wife? Because she's not your priority. If your wife was your priority, you would pursue. I was playing with her yesterday. She went downstairs to do some laundry. She said, where were you? She said, I went downstairs to the laundry. I said, I missed you. She looked at me like this. <laughs> I said, now that you're here, I don't miss you. If you go downstairs for the laundry, I miss you. Just sit right here. She didn't want to watch. I was watching, watching a Jackie Chan movie last night. She didn't want to watch that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, the law of pursuit states that whatever you pursue shows what you have prioritized in your life. Number three, real quickly please, we've got five minutes. Number three, from Genesis chapter 2 verse 24, <clears throat> therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. That's called the law of possession and exclusivity. The law of possession and exclusivity. What does Paul say to us? Paul said to us that uh, the husband's body belongs to the wife and the wife's body belongs to the husband. It's not to be, uh, it's not an open relationship. All right? You has, it, it is the law of possession and the law of exclusive, exclusivity. It's one flesh, one flesh, one root, one family, one union. Can you say amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, write this down, please. It's the law of possession. It's the law of exclusivity. That, hey, I've got, I'm responsible for her, but I'm also accountable to her. All right? I'm responsible for her, but I'm also accountable to her. So, write this down, please. These laws, the law of, of priority, the law of <clears throat> pursuit, the law of possession and exclusivity, and the two shall become one flesh. Let's read the next verse, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Next verse. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. The law of purity. The law of purity. So it's the law of priority, 
the law of pursuit, the law of possession and exclusivity, and the law of purity. Keep it pure within your marriage. Keep it pure within your marriage. Think about how you can bless your spouse, how you can bless and honor your spouse. Do I argue with Rosie? Sure. But doesn't go, I say what I got to say and I'm done. She says what she's got to say and it's done. There is no long-winded argument. We don't go to sleep overnight fighting and fussing with one another. And the majority of the time that we fight about is about what? Huh? <laughs> she says the majority when I'm fighting, I'm wrong. It's about, because I, I grew up in a uh, clean freak family environment. So I say to her, just keep, it, keep this tidy or the kids make up a mess and that's what we argue about. Why is this here? Why is that there? And then, and then, to be honest with you, I'm not exactly, even though I grew up in a clean freak family, not exactly the most tidy, tidiest person you've ever met in your life. She told you about me leaving wet towels in the bed, right? It's a special anointing. <laughs> Amen. I was like, well, what's the big deal? It's on my side. It's not on your side. Yeah, but it's going to make the bed wet. Okay, so we all have our problems, but keep these four simple laws in your mind. The law of priority. Let me understand that today. You got to make some, make your wife your priority. Guys, you got to make your wife your priority. How you do that? You're going to pursue. Don't just pursue her in, when it's time to go to bed. Amen. So one day she goes to me, why don't you just whisper sweet nothing to me? I said, all right then. So I came, I came and said, went to her, ear, into her ears and I went, sweet nothing. Sweet nothing, sweet nothing. What are you doing? I'm whispering sweet nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Am I a professional? <laughs> Thank you for answering that, Pastor. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Now, I'll tell you who's a professional, who's a romantic fellow here. That's it. Come over here, Pastor Steve. Thank, come over here. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This is the guy. You don't have to button up your... <laughs> this is the guy. Amen. This is the guy. All right. He makes a fuss over Miss uh, Ida, right? Pursuing... Miss Ida, is that right, Miss Ida? Amen. Pursuing after Miss Ida, praise God. Even though he works like uh, what? How many hours? Do, uh, how many hours does he work? You lost count. Works more than God, doesn't he? All right. <laughs> but he's always prioritizing, pursuing. Amen. And you know it's about. Uh, it's about. That's why they have a good marriage. We have a great marriage. We don't argue much. All right? Now, because there's nothing to argue about. Nothing to argue about. We just argue over cleanliness of the house. Keep this clean, do this clean, da 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 da, da blah, blah, blah. Okay? Oh, I, I'm very impatient. Am I impatient? Yes. I want it done yesterday. Not today. I want it done yesterday. So, Avi, especially you, Avi. All right? Anthony, Reggie, come on now. You got to make... Your husband, your wife, your priority. Ladies, you've got to make your husband your priority. You gotta pursue. Say pursue. Don't just make, don't just pursue the children. The children will leave. My son has left. My daughter left and came back. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But they will they will all leave one day. They will all leave one day. And that's all you got. One another. That's all you got. So you have prioritize, pursue, possess, pure. Can you say amen? 
And I'm, you know, one of the reasons why I didn't have a, 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 a learn about marriage, because my mom and dad left. They went, they traveled and went south 10,000 miles. So there was nothing for them to say. There was, and my mother-in-law lived four and a half hours away. There was nothing to say. Only when she came, she said a few things, right? But there was nothing to say. So we had to learn everything by ourselves. Are you listening? So that's how we grew with one another. So let me, and let me tell you this, ladies, guys, parents, leave these kids alone. Let them do their own thing. If they want your counsel, they'll come to you. If not, let it be. You may know better. Who cares? Let's stand together on our feet. Amen. <clears throat> Unless it is sin, you don't say anything. If it's just the way you do life, understand that not everybody will do life the way you do life. Let people be people. All right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Can you say amen? Okay. Let's stand together, please. Jacksonville, let's stand together. Glory to God. My son is here from San Antonio. I'm so glad to see him today and his uh, wife, praise God, Miss Daniela. The Lord bless you. We're going to spend some time with them together this week. Uh, praise God. Let's take our offering today. Come on, Jackson. If you put it on the screen for me, please. If you are in Jacksonville, you take your tithes and your offerings. You give to the Lord. Why do we give our tithe? Why do I give my tithe? Tithing indicates my, that I've made God first place in my life. Can you say amen? I've made God what? First place in my life. I have beaten the greed demon. I have beaten the greed demon. So I don't put, I don't argue with the tithe. I just give God the tithe and the offerings. Can you say amen? It's not that if you don't tithe, God's going to get you. No, 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 no. It's a principle of honor. Can you say amen? Glory to God. So let's take our tithe, gift, and offerings. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jacksonville, you do your thing. And I'm going to ask Pastor Steve to come and close in prayer. But I want to talk to all the couples today. Pursue. Don't take your wife for granted. Don't take your husband for granted. Doesn't matter how old they are. You know what? I came home the other day, and you know what was my, what was my bedside? There was a packet of almonds. Sugar almond, because I love sugar almond. It's a little thing like that. Are you listening? I brought her chocolate, which I like. <laughs> no, I didn't. I brought her chocolate. I didn't. Th this time I couldn't bring chocolate because it was um, too hot and it melted. But it's little things, little things that makes a difference. Can you say amen? Praise God. All right, Pastor Steve. Amen. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Pastor Glenn, for a great word. Um, you know, marriage is a tricky thing, you know. You got to take every day and get up and try to do your best. Put your priorities where you need to go. And, uh, and I do put priority in Ida, and I, I, I take pride in that. But uh, she takes priority in me also. You know, I made her cake last week for her birthday, and I think I eat just about all of it because I like the cake. But, you know, but that's all good. But, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gifts, the tithes that were given. And uh, we just pray that uh, our gifts outweigh or our gifts, you return more than what we give. Father, you're so great. You're so wonderful. You're so mighty. We take you for granted sometimes, and we just don't know, realize how great you are. So, Father, bless the gifts, bless the tithes, and just return them more than we will ever know. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, let's get Psalms 91 equipped. We know we do that here at this church. We believe in the Psalms 91, and, and we need to take that psalm and share it with people that 
otherwise wouldn't see Jesus unless they heard it from you. So we take this word and we receive it inside. We, we meditate on it and we let it go and let people get the results of hearing from us. Amen. Let's go. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the earl that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth in noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Faithless for Psalms 91 equipped. Amen? Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Everybody say amen. Amen. Remember, we've got fellowship uh, uh, meal downstairs, so take part of that, please. And now we've got cake downstairs. And um, we just want to bless the food and just pray that it's fit and nourishment for our bodies. Amen. Amen. And don't forget, Wednesday, uh, we'll carry on back to normal on the fire of God. We can spit, fly everything, and shout and scream and have Holy Ghost fit. Amen. Amen. And then next, next uh, Sunday, there'll be more, one more teaching on marriage. Amen. And then we're going to get back to our, you know, back to the spiritual things again. But we, every year we will teach at least one month on marriage. Can you say amen to that? Uh, marriage and relationship. Praise God. It's important because the devil wants to destroy marriages and families. And in, in, this, in this world that we're living right now, it is troublesome. So we need to know about relationships and marriage. Don't forget, fasting this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. All right, Wednesday we'll be here early in church for a 6 o'clock prayer. Amen. Tuesday will be online at 6 p.m. Can you say amen? amen. And then uh, Jacksonville and Louis will do their own prayer tomorrow as well. Praise God. So we'll do that. So let's not forget we're fasting and praying for a move of God and souls. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. The Lord bless you. Let's go downstairs and grab some coffee. Praise God. <laughs>